Pam. Let's see here. Maybe a small group today. Comes Alaya. Yay. Who's that? Your sister, Raina? <laughs> yeah, oh, Raina's sister. Hi, Alaya. How are you? Good. Okay. Great. All right. Miss Lars. Not now. Were we supposed to have it on a bigger piece of cardboard? Just like that, right? Okay. Exactly like that. Here comes Gagan. We'll chat for about five minutes while we wait to see who's coming. Mm -hmm. <sighs> How's your day going? Good. 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 Hey, Gagan. How are you? So you're gonna need a bowl. Looks like you guys are all set. Raina's even got an apron. That's great. Um, Miss Laws. Yes, um, sir. We don't have that much salt, so I only have half a cup um salt right now. Well, Is that okay? You can just see how it comes out, sweetie, if you want to try. Okay. Hey, here comes Tira. Good. Yeah. Um, do you have any rock salt or sea salt or other kinds of salt? I don't know. What the salt does is if you just use flour, it's super sticky and it's going to stick. What's that? I have sea salt. The one I'm using right now is sea salt. Okay. Well, um, the, the thing the salt does is it keeps it from sticking to your hands too much because if you just use flour and water, it's like glue. So it's going to be super sticky. The salt makes it less sticky. So you, it's more like, you know. Oh, good. Here comes Adrian. Lots of people coming. Yay. Hi, guys. Hi, Kira. Does anybody have questions about materials while we're waiting for everybody to arrive? <laughs> hey, Adrian. So yours just might be Hi. You're gone. What I'd recommend is don't use quite as much flour as the rest of us. So it's supposed to be equal parts salt and flour. You can maybe have double the flour. It's going to be pretty sticky, but just don't go much more than that or you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> you're going to have it stuck to you. Hey, guys. We'll wait about two more minutes. Oh, nice, Emily. I didn't know they had a chef's hat. I'll have to get my chef's hat on. <laughs> you're just the queen of the video filters these days. You and Adrian's been doing them, too. Let's see. I don't even see a chef hat. Oh, there it is. I see it. Does it do something to your eyes or not? No, how come it has eyes and a weird mouth on it? Okay, do I have a chef's hat on now? Let's see. Oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, oh it disappeared. <laughs> okay. Now I have my little chef hat on. Oh, <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> So funny. Oh, there's Adrienne with her, her chef's hat. I have a real one of those upstairs for baking club. You should come to the next baking club. It's going to be fun. All right. Okay, so I think maybe we have everybody who's coming and we can get started. Um, we are making salt and flour maps of Oregon. For this, you'll need a bowl, salt, flour, measuring device. Here comes Subi. Good thing we didn't start yet. Um, a spoon to stir with, or you can use your hands, honestly. And this is what we're making is something like this. If you can see Oregon, this shows you how near the ocean, you have the land pretty low, even though there's mountains. But as you get across the state, it raises up. And the, in fact, the United States keeps doing this as you head up towards the Rocky Mountains. So that when you get to Denver, even though Denver looks really flat, it's actually almost as high as Timberline Lodge in the city of Denver. That's how high it is. Because the land slopes up gradually from the ocean, you don't really notice it. But Eastern Oregon over in Bend is a lot higher elevation than we are here. We're almost at sea level. My house is at about 500 feet. A lot of places in Beaverton are only a couple hundred feet. Adrian, are you at your house here or are you up on the mountain? Uh, I'm at the mountain right now, so. So I think at government camp, you're maybe at about 3,000, 4,000 feet. Timberline's really mm -hmm. a low mountain, honestly, Mount Hood is. 
compared to like the Rockies that are 14,000 feet high, um, Timberline is uh, only, only what is it, 10 or 11, I think. So Timberline's at like 6,000. So anyway, um, so we're gonna be doing all of that with our map today. Um, but to get started, you just need to make sure you put the bowl in front of you. You've got um, your salt and your flour and your measuring device. And you want equal parts salt and flour. So it doesn't really matter how much salt, how much flour, um, but you want equal parts. So like Gagan said, he didn't have the full two cups of salt and that's okay. Just use less flour and you'll just have less clay and you'll have to spread it thinner. All right, so I'm gonna start with my salt and I'm gonna get two cups of salt and put it in my bowl. Takes a long time to pour. Whee! Does anybody know where salt comes from? How they get it? Nobody? Where do you think it comes from? Emily? The ocean? Yeah, they can. Sea salt comes from the ocean. I don't actually know how they do this kind of salt or where they get it from, but they have these big factories that get the salt out of the salt water. That would be a really good project. I, in fact, I have this kid's book right now on salt. I'm going to have to read it. I was supposed to read it for my book group this Friday, and I'm behind. Don't tell anyone. Okay, I'm putting two cups of salt in. I'm going to have a lot of batter. One cup of salt is fine, and then just make sure you use only one cup of flour. Mm -hmm. Equal parts salt and flour. Okay, okay I'm going to open up my flour. Oh, opening things is hard sometimes. Can you imagine doing this in class with 30 of us? Because study and yeah. people this day because we use so much salt and flour stuck in the carpet that it's terrible. So you want to make sure that you have it kind of smooth against the top. I do it just by kind of smashing it against the side. You want that fan? Yeah. One cup of flour. And what was this scoop it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got a knife, you can scoop off the top. I'm just kind of using the side to get it even. Kind of wiggle it. Second cup of flour. Once you have an equal of salt to flour, a one to one ratio, so one cup and one cup, or two cups and two cups, you're just going to stir it up nice and dry and get the salt and the flour all mixed together. I was telling Gagan if you don't use the salt, Flour and water just makes glue. And so it'll just be a mess. The salt makes it less sticky, but it can still be pretty sticky. The trick next is gonna be to put in water, but not too much water. Because if we get too much water, then we're gonna have a gooey mess too. So we're getting it nicely stirred up, friends. Okay. <laughs> Cash is using his hands. <laughs> Which is fine, actually. At school, when I'm mixing up huge vats of this for the kids, I usually just do it with my hands because it's easier. And you're not going to eat it, so you don't really have to wash your hands. Hopefully, you're not going to eat it. Yeah. Um, even if you were going to eat it, it would be um, completely gross. Okay. Because you're going to need Because, you know, it's actually... All right, you're going to need some water for the next part. Go ahead, Akash, what are you saying? Um, so did you know that this um, recipe is just going to make a giant batch of Play-Doh? Kind of, yeah. Hey, yo. All right, friends. Um, the next step is to add water. But remember I said too much water is bad? So yeah. let's go add the water a little bit at a time. We're going to start with a half a cup of water. Uh, yeah, a half a cup of water, stir it in, no, see if it's and then we'll add more. So I'm gonna go fill my cup halfway up. All right, you don't want your, you also don't want your water to like to be boiling or anything, cause that'll just make biscuits or dumplings. <laughs> okay. Um, Here's, here's the trick. You can pour this. 
During the uh, oh, wow. water in, it'll be a little bit hard, but add about a half a cup of water mm -hmm. and then stir it in. You can use your hands, but it'll get sticky. And here's the thing with this dough. If you wash it out while it's wet, it's pretty easy to wash out of clothes and things. But if you let it dry, it's kind of pretty hard to get out. So it'll look like it's not nearly enough, but it keeps spreading. So just get it stirred in really well. And then I'll show you mine. So mine has started to get some clumps, but it's pretty dry still. So I'm going to add the other half a cup of water now. So we're up to one cup of water. We've got four cups of dry ingredients and one cup of water. This is looking pretty good to me now, honestly. Here's what I'm going to do right now, because I don't want my dough to get too sticky. I'm going to use my hands to mix it in a little bit. You can see this piece right here is about right, but not all of mine's like this. It should hold a shape without sticking to my finger. Please don't hold yours over your computer like I just did. That was not the smartest thing. So now I'm just going to stick my hand in there and kind of mush it around, make sure I mm -hmm. spread out the redness. Mm -hmm. This is lots of fun. You can keep using your spoon. And here's the thing, I think mine is still a little too dry. It has a lot of powder. So I'm gonna get about maybe a sixth of a cup. So not a half of a cup, not a half of a half or a quarter of a cup, but even less than that. Sixth of a cup and add just a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We don't have six of that. If your still has powder, try dripping in just a little bit more. Oh, it was. Not too much. Fine. She said not all at once. You're fine. Just Make sure that you're not adding huge. Yeah, get the powder off the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get it all in there. Grab it at the bottom. Yeah. Then you can dive your fingers in there, get nice and mucky. Yeah. Nice. I have got, do you have like cooking gloves there? Those are pretty fancy. <laughs> okay, and when you're using your hands, you can kind of feel where the wet spots are and where the dry spots are. I think I'm still gonna need a little bit more water, but remember to be careful adding those last bits because it's easy to go over the top. You can kind of rub it off your hands and dribble a little bit more. Until you get all that loose, dry stuff picked up and it starts to form into a big ball. You're going to have to have teeth. Oh, this is getting beautiful now. It's a little bit sticky because I think I haven't mixed it in very well. Hopefully I didn't add too much. The good news is if you really did add too much water and it's really, really sticky, you can add a little bit of flour, a little bit of salt and uh, get it back to where you want it. Oh, this is getting beautiful. See how mine's starting to form into a big lump? When it starts to stick together into a big lump, you're getting close. So much fun, huh? Sometimes people like to make this kind of dough and then you either just dry it or bake it in the oven to make like Christmas ornaments, or you can use it like Play-Doh. It's nice and non-toxic, no chemicals. Actually, there's probably chemicals in the flour, huh? Oh, this is getting beautiful. So friends, when you start to feel like you have this nice big lump without extra pieces falling off, this is good. This is a happy day. Also, I can stick shapes into it. It doesn't stick to my fingers. Fun, huh? How's it going out there? It's so quiet. You can unmute. There's not very many of us on here. There you go. How's it going? Pretty good. 
It's starting to get stuck together. How are you doing, Gagan? Is it working okay? Good. Okay. I'll try not to make you touch your computers too much because I know your hands probably look like mine covered in go. Oh, look. Now my little ball has a hat. <laughs> Jump onto my ball. That was funny. <laughs> oh, it got off now. I want to make it stick on there again. Oh, this is a beautiful ball of dough. Keep it over the ball. Keep it over the ball. I don't think you could dry it like this. You can make your own bowling ball like we watched the other day. Just think someday you could be a bowling ball scientist. How about that? Keep trying to smear it out. Okay. I don't know how my ball got that hat on it. I really like that. Okay, put it back in and let's take the clothes off. I'm almost like scared to touch it. Do Try it. Make sure you get it to the point where you can actually handle it a little bit. So see, Gagan, yours is a little bit goopy, isn't it? You don't want to put too much water in there. Be careful. You might have to add a little more flour to get it drier. This is looking sticky. Em, you're looking pretty good. I can see your fingers. Adrian, you need to touch yours. Touch your dough. <laughs> All right, Cash is almost there. Susie looks like she's there. Gagan looks like he has a pretty sticky bath. <laughs> but he'll make it work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if you have extra, you can make it into some cool shapes and dry it out or even bake it at a really low temperature with some parent help in the oven. But if when your dough is ready, you can just set it down and make sure you get your map ready to go. So hopefully you had one of your maps of organs left over. I'm going to go wash my hands so they're nice and clean to get started. Set out your map so that you can see it. And go wash your hands so they're not too sticky and dry them really well. And then come back and get ready to put it on your mat. All right, make sure your hands are real dry before you get started. Nice, Adrian, that looks perfect. All right, and make sure you clean up your kitchen while you're waiting for everybody to get ready. I'm gonna go put away my flour and my salt so my mom doesn't get mad. Oh wait, my mom doesn't live here. She's so funny, I love her. Okay, and I'm gonna put my, oh, I might keep my water out just in case I need it. Sometimes the dough doesn't stick very well to the paper, so you might have to wet it down a little bit to get it to stick. Your hat looks like an eyebrow, Adrian. Look at your hat, it's like right on your forehead. <laughs> okay, all right, looks like most of us are ready to go. Thumbs up if you're ready, sticky thumbs up. Nice, good job, awesome. Two thumbs up. Cash, you ready? You look ready. Oh, elbows up. You're not ready? How come it looks good? Do you not have the map? What's going on, Ben? Tell me what's going on and I will wait for you. What do you need, it, Cash? I'm, I'm, my mom's just getting me the piece of cardboard right now. Oh, okay. All right. Well, if you know, and you don't have to be right with us the whole time. Is this? Rena, how are you doing? Are you ready to go? Okay. What's going on with your dough? Show me your dough. Oh, it looks good. It looks good. All right, I think you're ready, sweetie. All right, so here's what you do next. The next thing we need to do is we need to think about Oregon. You wanna identify the west coast of Oregon where you have the ocean. So when you're looking at it on your map of Oregon, it should be on your left side. Over here is the coast. That's where the land is the lowest. Mm -hmm. And then remember that the land builds up and gets higher as you head east into the high plateaus of Oregon. Okay. So when you spread your dough on the map, initially you're just gonna spread it out all along the edges of the boundary. 
So you're gonna put it right along the edges and make sure you get the outline and then kind of get it flat, but have more on the Eastern side of the state. Just like this one, where you can see it's very low here and it builds up higher on the Eastern side of the state, okay? So I'm, I'm probably not gonna use all my dough because I think it's too much. I'll probably pinch it in half. And then I'm gonna get it a little bit flat like a pizza, like you're making pizza, if you've ever made pizza, you slap it. La 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 la. <laughs> All right, and then I'm just gonna kind of put it on my map, and remembering that I want it thinner on the Oregon coast, I'm just gonna start spreading it out right up to the edges. And at first, it may not stick very well to the paper, but don't worry too much. I think as the moisture gets soaked in, it will more. And um, Miss Ross, um, yeah. Um, are we just gonna put it on there flat? Yep, right now we're just putting it on there flat and then we'll start making the mountains. Can't make it too much. And the rivers. You wanna go take a good look at your map to see where those rivers are. And um, we can put a map on in a minute too that will help us. Okay, and then squish it and move it. So right now all I'm doing is just kind of pushing it on and remembering that I want it fatter on this right hand side. I'm kind of pushing the bulk of it over. <laughs> it's a pretty, mine is a pretty fat wad of dough, just because it's a little easier to make mountains if you have something to pinch up. <laughs> okay, I can see somebody working away. Looks good. Lyle looks good. Just kind of push it out. I know. I thought you said you weren't great. You're doing great. You're putting it on the whole thing? Yeah. You just... I put on about half of it at the start, but you can try the whole thing if you want to. That's a lot of dough. No, like we're covering the whole map. Yeah, you're covering the whole map. Yeah. And and so the big idea right now is just to get our boundaries and then to start to work on the thickness across Oregon. So you can see I've spread mine out, but it's all about the same thickness. Flat. So now I'm going to start pushing it up this way so that it'll be more on the eastern side of the state. We all know that Oregon is lower towards the coast and then it gets up higher in the desert and the eastern side. And the Willamette Valley is nice and low. In fact, it's almost the same as the ocean. It's not very high at all. So as we drive across the state, we kind of go up. Spotting it out. Bend is higher. And then as you head further east, Burns is much higher. And you head into Idaho, it's higher than we are. And then you keep heading to the west, to the Rocky Mountains, and things are really high. Are your boundaries there? So you just have to even this out. Remember that your boundary on the south, down there by California, is a political boundary. So it's not made by any river or anything. So it's really straight. Down along California and Nevada, it should be just straight. Miss Ross? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, are we supposed to make the like slope? The slope? Yeah. So right now what we're working on is getting it spread across everything and then starting to push it to the eastern side of the state. So trying to... Yeah, just kind of taking, if you can see what Elias doing with her fist, just kind of pushing it up. And being careful that it, like as I pushed, it went way over the Columbia River, so I had to push it back. Be careful of the Columbia River and then your yeah, eastern yeah. boundary. Does anybody know what that river is on the eastern boundary between us and Idaho? What is it, Adrian? The Rogue River, I think. No, that one's in the south. Uh, so over on the east. The yeah, the Snake River and the really great canyon. Does anybody know the name of that canyon? It has kind of a bad name. Yeah, go. Adrian, go ahead. Hell's Canyon, I think. Yeah, AG Double Toothpick Canyon. <laughs> Akash is laughing. <laughs> All right, friends. Keep spreading your dough across. If you pat it kind of, it gets nice and mushy. I'm gonna let you get it spread out a little bit longer and then we're gonna start to add our mountains and our rivers. For your river, you're gonna need um, 
a pencil or something kind of pointy to help put the river in. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna look for a pencil right now for mine. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is good. Mm -hmm. Pencil does not have to be sharp. And if you get done and you're impatient, you can play around with your leftover dough and make some sort of cool shape. It's really fun. You can um, you can press it into it. It's just something like a shell. You can press it into it. Miss Laws. Yeah. Uh, can we just tweeze this part of the um, spoon, the bottom of it? Sure, I think well, if that works, that's going to be fine. Hi. Uh, you can take yeah. your uh, left hand and dad, around. Uh, around. Uh, can I use the same ornaments? Because, like, you know how yeah. we've made, like, dough ornaments for? That's exactly what we need. If you are making ornaments for, like, your Christmas tree or to hang somewhere, it's they're not good. fun. But you're going to want to put a hole yeah. in them so you can put a string on them. So if you're playing around with your extra dough, make sure you're putting holes in it to be able to hang it. Beautiful. There we go. I'm making rivers. Do you want to make a hot hook right now? Yeah, you can. Yeah. We're going to uh, sit. So if you finish spreading your stuff out and you're just waiting to do the uh, rivers and the mountains and things, go ahead and play around with your extra dough. What are we doing? Looks good, Alaya. <laughs> oh, now your dad has the hat on. <laughs> Adrian, did you see that when he walked away? The hat went with him. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Great. Ruby, that's looking good. How you doing, Reina? That looks great, Gagan. Actually, that worked out just fine, honey. That's going to be fine. In your mouth? Great. This is perfect for my order trail book. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow you got that little hat to stick to your hands just then. I don't know how you did that. <laughs> okay, this is looking great, you guys. All right, how many people? Give me a thumbs up if you think you're ready to start doing like mountain ranges. Anybody? Nobody's ready? Okay, we'll give you another minute. One more minute, and then we're going to start on our mountain ranges. Okay. Is Lost Room supposed to do the rivers? We're going to do those. Yeah, I mean, you can start now if you want to, but we're going to do those too. I thought we'd put the mountains in first. And then do the rivers. I'm going to run and grab my extra copy of the Oregon map. I'll be right back. Jelly fill. for spring break over here on the Waihi River, which is a tributary of the uh, Snake River. Really remote, there's a big desert over here called Alver Desert. We go hike around, look for rattlesnakes and horny toads. Eodes. Are you nice and sticky, Alaya? You look yes. like you're having fun. <laughs> you build a little snowman, whatever you need to do while you're waiting. Okay, how are we doing there, guys? Are we getting closer to ready to put on the mountains? Do it again, don't bring your hand out. Ash, how are you doing on spreading that out? Okay, getting there. Rena, how are you doing, sweetie? Okay. Made a beautiful snowman. Hmm, there we go. Okay, lots of fun. Fun with Play-Doh. If you have a little brother or sister, you can let them make some things out of Play-Doh. It'll dry nice and hard and you can paint it too. Oh, there you go. Are you giving your extra to your brother? 
No, he has the hat on. Look at that. He has the hat on. <laughs> Hi. Nice hat. <laughs> okay. I think we're going to start. On the so, you guys, first of all, just start by having a look at this map. I like my chairs. That's amazing. On a map, the mountains don't stick up that far because the truth is, when we're looking at a mountain from the ground, we're looking from sea level and they look like they're really big. But compared to how big the earth is on a map, mountains don't really look that huge. So they're more like little pinchy spots. You know, Oregon has some mountain ranges. So who can tell me one mountain range in Oregon? All right. The no, exactly. good range. Oh, wait, I heard a whole bunch. Subi, what's one? I can't hear you. You're, you're muted. The coastal range. The coastal range. Okay, that's a great one to start with. So here's how I'm going to do my coastal range. First of all, make sure you're on the coast. So that's over here on the left side of your map. Has a rough outline. The coastal range stretches the whole distance from down in California, the Klamath Mountains and all that, up through the coast range all the way up into the Tillamook. So it's all along the coast. It's pretty close to the coast. And it's a whole bunch of little mountains. So it's not one mountain. It's more like a whole bunch of little mountains. So I just take the dough that's there and kind of pinch it. Pinch it She's into little mountains. Right on the edge. She's right in there. It's pretty close the to the coast. Yep. You don't want it too far out because then that's the Willamette Valley. Right along the coast, we're making like a hundred little tiny mm -hmm. hills. And you guys, the neat thing yeah. is, on the whole during coast um, COVID, yeah. all the hiking's been really crowded. And so we've been going to the oh, coast trains. And they've just got a ton of little mountains. Really, you plenty of time. Wash your hands. Plenty of time. No rush. Just start making little pinchy marks. They shouldn't look like giant. Like I've had kids do this before when we're doing the mountains. They take this and they stick it on the map like that. Sorry, our mountains don't look like that. <laughs> no giant mountains, guys. <laughs> but if you don't have enough to pinch, then you can always add little bits. As you're pinching, you're going to see it leaves little cracks and things in the dirt. When mountains are built, when when plates crash yeah. together, it doesn't yeah. touch the ground. Yeah, so that's authentic. Right. So as you're looking yeah. at my map, it's just the very that's little right. edge that I'm putting yeah. mountains on. Yeah. Oh. That's great. And then remembering that right next to the coast range is the Willamette Valley. I'm actually taking my thumbs and sort of pressing down next to the mountains. Because we live in the Willamette Valley, and that's that area right in there. So Portland, if you see this little niche, Portland's in that little niche right there, where the Columbia River joins with the Willamette River. You're going to get too far out. So she's and we're on a, a river valley, so. so we have our little bit of range, we have the coast, and then we have the Willamette Valley right here. She needs it to be like a padded down. And if you would like to, I don't know how you're doing on your coast range. Are you guys getting close? Nice. Looks good. You know, um, Aliyah, you're going to want to flatten all of your ground out a little bit more so that then when you add your mountain, so yeah, yeah. Use your palm of your hand instead of your back to get it flat. Good. Gagan looks good. Hey, Gagan, are the mountains in beautiful lines like that in real life? <laughs> Make your mountains messier. <laughs> they don't line up quite that well. Okay, your mountain should kind of be all over the place. There you go. Put some in the middle, buddy. There you go. Sorry, I know you liked them all lined up like that, but nature's not quite that neat. Looks beautiful, Em. Nice. Good job. Pinching away. If your hands feel too gooky to pinch, then just go wash them and dry them out. You have plenty of time. Range. Oh my gosh, I need to go wash my hands. <laughs> you can go wash them. Yeah, if you ever go to the Oregon coast, usually there's lots of nice little uh, hilly climbs that you can climb up and look at the ocean. Lots of hikes around there. 
Very nice. When I go to Coos Bay, there's a, um, the beach is sort of near it, and we always go tide pooling. Nice. And we always go look at the tide pools by the Very cool. What have you seen in those tide pools? Anything great? Um, yeah, we saw a bunch of little fish, and there's actually a couple of anemones. Oh, cool. Okay. I know that everybody can't be at the same place at the same time. So don't I'm, worry I'm if just you get behind. Them. You can always Google what Oregon looks like and keep working on this at a slower rate if you want to. So looking at my map of Oregon right now, which I think I just spotlighted for you guys, I've got my coast range. Mm -hmm. Now, remember I told you that Portland is right here where the Columbia River meets with the Willamette River. So I pushed down and kind of made a Willamette Valley that goes all the way down. There's actually some mountains down at the bottom you have to go through as you're heading down to Medford. But for the most part, the Willamette River comes out of the Cascade Range, which we haven't made yet. And it comes up through uh, Eugene and Salem by Shampooie Park. And then it comes all the way up to Portland and the Willamette River flows through Portland and into the Columbia River. So if you wanna take a pencil and just push down a little bit to make your river, that would be great. You just take a pencil and you start in the coast or in the Cascade Range and you come down along through Eugene and through Salem and Portland. And that's the Willamette River. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So guys, if you haven't looked yet, make sure you look and see where I put this river. It doesn't, I kind of made it too deep because it's not really that deep, but oh well. And we'll be able to paint these later on. And as soon as you have the Willamette River, then you're going to be ready to make the Cascade Mountain Range, which is the highest mountain range in Oregon. And so these mountains should be a little bit bigger than your coast range mountains. They start way down at the south in the Klamaths and they come all the way up past Crater Lake through uh, Mount Thielsen, uh, Diamond Peak, up by Mount Bachelor, Black Butte, Broken Top, Three Finger Jack, Three Sisters, Mount Jefferson, all these gorgeous mountains in the Cascade Range coming all the way up. So again, we're going to start pinching our mountain. And you're going to want to make kind of a big one down in the south, even though it's not really that big. And that's going to be Crater Lake. So Crater Lake is down in the southern part of that range. And you're going to want to take your pencil and put a crater in it because it was a giant volcano, Mount Mazama that exploded and it was a mega explosion long, long time ago. And it spread ash all over the place. Anyway, and you're gonna make Mount Thielsen's real pointy. Diamond Peak, lots of other small mountains. Oh, there. That's great. Coming up to around Bend, they're starting to get bigger. You got the three sisters, which is three pretty big mountains together. North yeah. sister, south sister, middle sister, and broken top coming up. You're getting that. Jefferson is a pretty big one. Three finger jack. This is the Cascade Range. They have lots of lakes that are trapped in there, really nice. Coming up. And finally ending in our big, beautiful mountain, the highest mountain in Oregon, which is? Over a little bit. You got it. My mountain came out a little bit. Those are a little over. Mountains. Yeah. Mountains, mountains, yeah. mountains. See how she's over. These mountains oh, cool. Are they, this is all the stuff that is over here. Very nice. Over half, yeah. Oh, I think I squished mountains. Like um, racer. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nice. Your little mountains made. Yeah. Andy and the gorge. Yeah. Very nice. Good. This up by Mount Hood is called um, Bull Run, and it's where our water comes from for Portland. It comes off of the side of Mount Hood and it flows into Portland, and it's some of the cleanest water 
cleanest drinking water in the world. We have really good water in Portland. Blue. And down white. here, I've got my crater oh. lake. I made a crater in it. <laughs> Good job. Mount Hood. Make sure you put Adrian on Mount Hood. Make sure you make a very tiny Adrian on there. Bachelor. All right. Very nice, friends. Can you help me? Will you help me? Yeah. I'm making a map of Oregon. Oh, oh, oh. I don't even know what, what is going to look like. It looks like this. Yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. Hi, friends. Some other mountain ranges? Yeah. And more oranges? Mm -hmm. I love it. Looking good, you guys. So, if you get done early, you can start working on some of the other rivers and things. Could you do you want to paint? Is it Texas? Hmm? Hmm. Hey, Texas? So this is orange. Where we live. Hmm. All right, friends, can I have your attention for one second? Look up at me and I'm going to add one more river. So looking at the map now, you'll notice on this map, we have this river in Eastern Oregon that comes from, um, it flows through Sun River and Bend. Does anybody know what that river is called? They, it's, it's the Deschutes River. river right? Deschutes. The Deschutes River, let's do the Deschutes. The Deschutes is right along the edge of this Cascade Range, flows through places like the Biggs, ends up in the Clumber River Gorge, right about there you want to go and add that one it's a big river in oregon miss laws yeah me and my dad every year we go rafting on the dishes do you know you know what i've gone kayaking down that river i have a funny story about that there's a famous rapid called boxcar have you been down yeah that? yeah it's so one my day favorite we decided one we were going to scout boxcar emily so we put our boats on the edge of the shore and we climbed up to look at the rapid and somebody said, hey, look, here comes a boat. Let's watch how they run the river. So we were watching and this kayak that looked vaguely familiar to me started going through the rapids just perfectly. The only thing was nobody was in it. And I suddenly realized, you know where this story's going? It was my boat. Yes. I hadn't pulled it up far enough. It had nobody in it and mm -hmm. it ran the rapids beautifully. So I had to run down and get my boat out of the river. Then I had to carry it back up to the top so I could run the rapid again. <laughs> I've only, I think I only, I think I didn't, I wonder if I flipped my first time. I think I was my first time when I flipped um, in my own IK by myself. Uh -huh. And um, I was trying to, I didn't, but I had a neon shirt. Oh. And it wasn't on boxcar, but I had a neon shirt on. And so as when I went down, my dad was just staring at me because he could see my very, very bright shirt. Don't tell your mom that story. She'll probably be nervous. How old were you? <laughs> She's right next to me. Uh -oh. and she, she knows it. Were you little when that happened? No, it was, I was probably, um, probably only... It was probably last summer. Oh, okay. Well, you're, as long as you're good summer, you're fine. Want to help me? Hmm? All right, friends, let's add, a, let's add another river. You ready? Okay, who can tell me? We've put, on, we've put on the Willamette River. We've put on the Deschutes River. What's this other big river in Eastern Oregon called? I don't know. It has a man's know. name. Nobody knows? What give them, what give John Day. Them? John Day. The John Day River comes through the Blue Mountains. And then on up. So you can either start by making the Blue Mountains or you can do the John Day River. I think I'll start with the river and then add the mountains. So I'm going to add my river. It kind of curls around a little bit and then it comes out almost where the Deschutes does. It's also a really big river, but it's kind of on the desert side in the Blue Mountains. So we have some real nice mountains in the center of the state. Just You're going to finish. Oh, I'm getting tiny again. That's good. No, it's 
Okay. We have some called the Elkhorns and the Blue Mountains and the Wallawas. And they're kind of all on this Eastern side. And believe it or not, you guys, over here, there's this town called Joseph. Has anybody ever been there? They call it Little Switzerland because it not only has mountains with snow on them that are gorgeous, but it has a little cable car to take you to the top of the mountain. If you want. Pretty cool. We've got it all in Oregon. This is Oregon. Oregon. Where we met. We live here. Thank you. So, so now we're making the eastern side of the state's mountains. They have a lot of mountains on the northeastern part of the state, but not too many down here in the southeast corner. So we're making the Blue Mountains and the Wallawa. We live around here. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. The name of the place where we just Edward Point. Edward Point. You live in Beaverton. You Mom, does Connie live in Beaverton or Portland? <laughs> I live in Portland. All yeah. right, friends. Remember I told you this is the Snake River along the Idaho border and the Hell's Canyon? But then at the bottom of it, it actually has this other river called the Owyhee, and it's our wildest river in Oregon. It's kind of hard to get to. I've always wanted to go there, and now we're finally going to go for spring break this year. My husband and I are going to drive over there. But it's miles from anything else. It goes right along this edge, kind of at this funny angle. That's the Owyhee River. It's got a canyon in it. And actually, Emily, I would love to raft that river. It's one of the only ways to see the canyon is to raft through there. But the problem is it's in the desert. And so in the summer, the water's too low. So you have to do it during the school year. Maybe this year's your chance, Emily. You have to go in like April, which I can never go in April because I'm always teaching school. All right, at this point, we have the Coast Range, we have the Cascade Range, we have the Wallawas and the Blue Mountains over in the northeast corner. We have the Willamette River, we have the Deschutes River, we have the John Day River, and the Hawaii River. Wow, wow, wow. Let's see, what else should we add, my friends? And we all have Crater Lake. Can everybody get there at Crater Lake? Yes. Oh, you're gonna mess it up. I Mom, can you change your camera angle? Well, I can't see where you're doing. All right, your friend. Your side needs to be a little. Uh, I can tell you're all so busy making your beautiful maps. Mm -hmm. I hate to interrupt you. Mm -hmm. We have a few more rivers to add. Oh, yeah, the room. Okay. Ooh, that's a nice, nice book, darling. Mm -hmm. All right, friends, down here in the southern part of the United States, I know Emily's going to know this one, so Emily, be quiet. I mean, not southern part of the United States, southern part of Oregon. In southern Oregon, we have a big river that people love to raft. And you can also hike along it. It starts in the Willamette Valley, and it goes through the coast range to the ocean. Who knows what this river is called down here? The Rogue River. The Rogue River. Good job. And Emily, didn't you say you just rafted that one? No. Um, no, we didn't just raft it. We rafted it um, a couple months ago. Okay, okay, so it starts up above Crater Lake. It yes. goes down into the valley a little bit and then cuts through the southern part of the coast range and goes to the ocean. So make sure you're adding the Rogue River. Don't worry about the titles. We'll put all of that on after we paint it next week. Yeah. It'll take it about a week to dry. Yeah. So. yeah. Adding the Rogue River. You guys can add as many details as you want if you want to Google a map of Oregon and add even more, but I have a few more things I want you to add. Uh, down here in the southern part of the state, we actually have one of the most famous wetlands in Oregon, and it's called the Klamath Basin. And the reason that it's really great is because a lot of birds that are migrating stop there in the wetlands. 
And so even though it's kind of dry and deserty down there, it has a lot of water as well. So down here we have these rivers that flow into the Klamath wetlands area and it's just a whole lot of water down here in the south. Not enough, of course, because the farmers want the water and the fish people yeah. want the water and the bird people want the water. So everybody yeah. fights over it. Yeah, coming, coming, coming. And a few years yeah. back, they were fighting over the water so much that the some of the people got mad and stood there with guns saying, you can't have our water. Isn't that crazy? That was probably 20 years now. This is down where Medford and Klamath Falls are. And then the Siskiyou Mountains are way down at the bottom, sort of on the border between um, Oregon and California. All right, just a couple more things to add, my friends. Everybody looking over here, there is one mountain in Southeast Oregon. It's called Steens Mountain. It doesn't even really look like a mountain. It kind of looks like a big ridge. So if you could make a ridge line right here. This is Malher Wildlife Refuge. There's a lot of wildlife down here. We actually have a herd of wild horses down here, you guys. They live in the canyons on the backside of Steens Mountain. And the wild tiger mustang horses. And every year they round them up because the horses, horses reproduce too fast and they eat too much grass. And so they round them up down there and they keep them in this town called Burns. And if you want to adopt one, you can adopt a wild mustang horse but they're wild. <laughs> and then over here, we have Heart Mountain Antelope Refuge, and you can go and see herds of antelope, pronghorn antelope. And there's lots of Indian ruins down here. And then on this side right here is this cool spot called Alver Desert. And it's like a white desert with cracked soil and bubbly mud pots. Lots of people don't know about that. It's super cool. So make your Steens Mountain and your Albert area and you should be in good shape. Steen has lots of little lakes too, but there's so many that there's not like just one giant lake. What about Malher Lake? No, I forgot. Yeah, Malher, Malher Lake is more like a wetland than a lake. If you go there, it looks like a lot of just kind of wet grassy land. Oh my gosh, it looks That's so right good. Right up here. Oh, Mount Mount mm. Can you go there and use this? So if you need to see more of Oregon so that you can do this, feel free to Google a map of Oregon. I'm going to stop the recording because I think we're pretty good. This will have to dry for about a week. And then after that, we'll paint it next week. Okay.